look at this. This is this is what makes life pretty awesome to find wet signatures from movie stars and this family being public figures. Uh, the photos aren't really private. Once you become a public figure, your photos are not very private anymore. During that time, the question was, what was his involvement with communism? This book here answers the question. Here is the most prized possession of all. Okay, Raiders, let's get into the Lost Treasures of Marta Torin. Now, this came out of her daughter's locker here, this beautiful sculpture. I really love it. No, I'm not going to sell it. It actually sits on my shelf next to my pirate-themed uh, items. But let's get in to see what kind of treasures we have found. Now, look at this. This is, this is what makes life pretty awesome, to find wet signatures from movie stars from themselves. We have here wet signatures from Marta Torin. And you can just see, I've already uh, put all these together here so you can look at them. Uh, you can see it's it's uh, in her native language. I believe it was Swedish. Sweden. Um, cannot read it. <laughs> uh, there is uh, some famous actor here. I don't know the name of that. Uh, she got him to sign it here. This is her husband, who's also a famous playwright, Leonardo. We'll be going into his stuff shortly. But we could see all this beautiful, wet signature from her. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, if I want to go to an auction block or... Or we're just put it on eBay. I'm still trying to decide that here. Here's a newspaper clipping into which she signed. Isn't that pretty amazing? Pretty awesome. Here we have her acting and her signature here. More wet signatures from Marta Torin. I just... Huh. Man, just, just to look back at the past to see the... the how they lived back then, the, the clothes that they wore. It's so totally different now. Very modest compared to modern day. But these are actually the private letters between Marta and her husband, Bernardo. Um, I did group them all together here, except for this set of letters here. That was their daughter's there, who was also a famous TV star. But here you could see these letters were actually sent uh, to her husband. This is what she wrote, letters from Marta to Narado. Uh, Nardo, his nickname was Nardo, Leonardo, Nardo. And uh, what do we have here? We have the letters that he sent her. Him being, of course, a, a playwright was more of, I think, was the more romantic. And just by reading through these letters here, I'm seeing a story that Hollywood does not know about them, about their marriage, and then that led to their separation, and uh, ultimately to her death. Um, I'm kind of questioning her death, too. I, I don't like conspiracy theories, but um, her death to me seemed highly, highly suspicious. Um, she was getting better, and then all of a sudden, she died, and uh, she was coming out of uh, rehab, Here's this film here. Um, put this tab off here. I don't know if you could see it too well. This right here is actual lost footage of Marta here. Uh, probably the only one of its kind right now. So we actually have footage of Marta in the movies. So I'm going to see Beverly Hills camera shot. But yeah, um... Leonardo begged for his, in the letters, he, Leonardo begged for his wife to come back to them and their daughter. Their daughter was hurting. He even wrote a letter on behalf of their daughter who couldn't even read yet from her point of view saying, Mommy, what's wrong? I love you. Come back. So Marta started going out having affairs. Don't know if Bernardo did. It didn't seem like it, uh, but I know she did from his letters. He goes, that's okay. I want to take you back. She got hooked on the drug and the, and the, and the wildlife 
seen when she was overseas. Um, then she went to rehab and she started getting better and was thinking, talking about coming back, being a family again, and then she died. Uh, they said from a, a brain aneurysm or, or, or something. So, I don't know. So, uh, we can see this photo here. This is their daughter here who became the movie star. This is Dead Rat Face. There's mom and dad here. You can see scenes here of her mom. I mean, she started alongside with Humphrey Bogart. I mean, she... okay, here's her. Here's uh, Marta Torrens, mom and dad. I guess he was um, in the military over in Sweden. Um, wish I could understand that language. <laughs> but... Uh... This is interesting, this old photo albums here. You could see them later on in life. That's her and her dad. Uh, her mom, of course, died years ago, but these two did survive. Here it says the ancients. <laughs> uh, it, it's so sad that um, uh, just, just to uh, see family photos could be lost to the dump. I, I could have thrown them away, uh, but I did not. I did try to return these to the owner, but she no longer exists anywhere. Um, I've tried for several months and I gave up on it. So with that being said, and, and this family being public figures, uh, their photos aren't really private. Once you become a public figure, your photos are not very private anymore. Um, uh, Marta Torn now an Indian princess <laughs> from the Montreal Daily Star. And when you become a public figure, uh, you become a historical figure. And um, so, I mean, this is just the personal family photo albums. Uh, there's, there's the, there's the mom and the baby there. So, so we have this photo family book. Here is when she started doing research on her mom. She started trying to collect as many photos as she could of her mom. Now, these are not wet signatures. I loved how she, in order to know her mom, because she's just a little girl when her mom died, and I know it probably hurt. I mean, maybe she was within that age frame. It, it bothered her, or maybe she doesn't remember, but she did go back. She did, in her letters, talk about how she missed having a mom in her life. Um, actually, she became a psychologist later, and I watched a videotape that she had where she had a counseling session with somebody who she did talk about. She related to a little woman that she didn't have a mom growing up, but it didn't hurt her as emotionally as, um, as most people would go through emotions. Uh, but it was the absence of the mom figure in there that made her sad, where the lady that she was talking to, her mom did die when she was a little bit older in life. But here we could see the films of Marta Torin in alphabetical order here. Our first film, I guess, was Assignment Paris in 1952, The Casbah in 1948, The Departed in 1950, Illegal Entry in 1949, The House of Riccardi in 1954, Madalena uh, in 1954-55, very interesting story. I wish I could see this in English sometime. The Mystery Submarine in 1950. One Sway Street, 1950. The Paris Express in 53. Puccini, 1952. La Puerto Abuerto, you notice, 1957. There's no information on that movie. The Rogues Regiment, 1948. Now, this movie I did watch because of her called Sirocco, 1950, long, alongside with Humphrey Bogart. So, uh, there you go. Humphrey Bogart is Sirocco. Spy Hut, 1950. We have some here. I guess this is from sp The Spy Hunt. The Sword in the Desert. That's another one I want to watch, 1949. And I believe that was her last film because that's how it ends here. Articles and background information. And then, of course, you could see other pictures here. When she started out, before she started in the movie, she started in the plays over in Sweden. I believe it's Sweden. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's been several months since I've actually looked into her history a lot closer. 
stuff. But um, yeah, it's it's amazing to just be able to turn and put a movie on nowadays and and uh, you know um, uh, see uh, uh, that. I mean, I know she's passed away, but you could see her alive on the movie screen. That's pretty cool. Um, here's all of her co-star. I love it. Humphrey Bogart was her co-star. Uh, here we have Carrie McDonald. I don't know a lot of these names here. You guys might. Uh, again, this is that before my time, of course. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see what's in this book here. Uh, we have more photos here. Uh, there's mom and dad in a very loving scene before everything fell apart because Hollywood gets to people even back then and she became started drinking started hanging out with other people you could just tell that he was romantic and he did everything to try to hold the family together now this was his second wife I do believe he was married to her three times in his life his first wife died and um, I think I recall by suicide but I do not Remember, I'll have to look that up later. But here we see mom and dad. All right, let's see what kind of treasures we find here. Huh. Mom and the baby girl. She was just, this is probably right before her mom died. You could tell just by looking in her eyes, she's a recovering alcoholic. Maybe did some, some drug use. I'm not sure about drug use, but alcoholism, I do know. Uh, but she is looking pretty messed up in this picture here. Uh, 1952, you can look at her eyes here. She seems to be, got that haunting stare that there's something not right. Um, you can see how her eyes kind of sparkled in this one compared to this one here. Marta Torin. Looks like someone drew this one. This one, the baby was born. I could I could tell uh, Leonardo really loved her. He really did. And of course, uh, this is their daughter here. Her daughter's headshot here. Of course, this is the daughter and the dad later on in life. All right, next book. Photo album. Now this is the album of Marta Torn, I believe Yes, Marta Torn actually cut out everything about herself. I mean, I guess if you become famous, you want to know everything about it. I mean, I would. I mean, I've done that. If there's things in the newspaper for when I went to war, I would clip it out. You could see all these clippings that Marta did of herself because to keep record of it. Uh, the Stockholm skin from Stockholm. Um, yeah, all these 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 clippings. I mean. <laughs> very ex extensive here. Ah, uh, look at those very seductive eyes from the 1940s. <laughs> Again, in another language that I cannot understand. But here we have just, you know, pages of, of clippings here. <coughs> Some more film roll here, it looks like. Ah, uh, looks like more lost footage. You'll see, it looks like it's Marta there. Uh, oh, it looks like Leonardo, maybe? It could be pictures of her and her husband. One of these days, I'm going to find a projector and hook this up so I can watch it. <coughs> I had a projector once. My wife bought a projector. was really happy, surprised me with it. And first she brought it home. <coughs> I hooked it up, and it did not work at all. Okay, I'm not sure, <coughs> these seem to be just uh, letters that are grouped together, I'm not going to go into it, Narado, letters from the husband to wife, I mean, if someone ever wants to do a book about this family, you can pretty much piece together the private life that nobody in Hollywood knows, just through the letters and the pictures and everything. I mean, this is this is a historian's uh, dream right here to go through it, to write a, a picture of what it was like in their marriage. Uh, like here is Marta before their marriage, you know? I mean, the daughter was, was uh, 
uh, kept everything grouped together, her family history, I uh, hear. Narado Lassie, I don't know what that means. So yeah, uh, a lot of letters here. Ah, uh, movie photos, tons and tons of movie photos here. I mean, these are original photos here. It says in the back, uh, from Barcelona. Photos from Barcelona. You just see tons. I mean, it's this, these photos are very thick. Very thick photos, not the cheap ones you get nowadays. That, uh, well, they still make them nowadays, but uh, the thin, flimsy ones. Okay. Um, then we have, this is where I went around and I, I grouped a lot of the photos together of Marta and them together. There's stacks of photos. I'm not going to go through all of them, but here's the there's a loving couple right now by before the baby was born uh, Marta took a lot of pictures. She just loved to take photos so, All right That's that for that box. Let's put it away and move on to the next treasures of Marta okay, Here I discovered another album that uh, uh, what do you call these scrapbooks that uh, Marta put together of herself? I think I have it upside down. There we go. These, these, these beautiful, beautiful the historic, historical significance of all this, even though it's another language, but this is all, you know, a Marta from from uh, her for, from her home country, uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and um, the Tampa Sudden Day Tribune, 1955, 20 years before I was born. Now I just want to pull out some of the uh, really, really cool things here. Before they had television, like they do now, of course they had the movies, and the movies wasn't every day, but they read a lot. And this is all books from Marta's personal library here. Um, these probably will be sold or go up to auction. The American Past. I guess somebody needed to get uh, her caught up on About America, what they did. All right, here's another book, uh, The New York Confidential. Again, this was to Marta from... Uh, her husband, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He bought her a book. Man, I wish I could buy my wife a book for Christmas and let her be happy with it. <laughs> this is the movie she starred in called Madalena. Um, here we, I do believe I have that actual script from Madalena. Uh, here, oh, we'll go with that. When I got to find that script, I'll talk about that. This is Talila, Marta own book here. What do we have here? Here we have a Marta Torn book, The Disenchanted. A Leaf in the Storm, a Marta Torn. I have no idea what these books are about. I mean, these are older books. I know they're probably worth something. The Egyptian, another. And what makes it, these books even more valuable, of course, they've got Marta Torn's wet signature in each of these because this is from her own personal and private library. Love Comes Fast, Marta Torin. Uh, and look like came fast with her and Bernardo. They got married pretty quickly. Uh, the Red and the Black, Marta Torin. Marta Torin, The Quartet. Marta Torin, The One. The Brave Bulls, again another Marta Torin. If you are interested in buying these books, you can go to my uh, my link on the internet and send me an email and tell me which one you want, and I will uh, mail it to you. And uh, you can purchase these outright before I even put them on the market. Our Town Play with Marta Torin, I believe she was starting that one. Marta Torin, never a greater need. Here we have Marta Torin, and this is my beloved. 
Another book from her library, Summer in Smoke, Marta Torin, Blood Brother. Now I'm showing you all the wet signatures of there so you know that it is legitimate. Marta Torin here. And I do have evidence. A lot of people say, well, can you authenticate all this? Yes, I can because I do have the uh, IDs um, of their daughter who, if you check it out, is... Her daughter through the family history that's her mother and with me having that personal information to validate uh, that uh, that that their daughter is who she is they can also validate that her mom was Marta Torin so these are all validated the importance of living the far side of paradise Marta Torin this is the last book of Marta Torin okay let's get this here Ah, Life Magazine, 1949. Marta Torn appeared in Life Magazine. Still very colorful after all these years. What is this? It's the Life Magazine. And here's another one here, too. This one's still sealed up. June 13th, 1949. This is very interesting. Um... John Wayne died. Uh, uh, somebody in the family kept this. Of course, he died in 1979, well after Marta Torn had passed away. But I do have a John Wayne newspaper here, the death of John Wayne. Their daughter, Christina, who did a lot of research on her mom, tried to find as much of her, mommy's, her mom's movies as she could. So here we have a VHS of Sword in the Desert, The Two Loves Had I, Sirocco, the only one I've watched so far. The Cosba. Here we have... Uh, nope, this is a documentary uh, that her dad had done. It was a playwright. We have here, this one, The Paris Express. 1894, The Paris Express. Sirocco and the Hunger, another Sword in the Desert, and The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife, remember that. We are going to be talking about that shortly, okay? This is kind of, I believe, what broke her dad into the Hollywood scene when he wrote the script for this, The Bishop's Wife. These are all kind of private tapes of their daughter there. Now to finish up everything... These are some more personal items of Marta growing up. This is a uh, maybe a little jewelry box. Uh, it's worth a little bit of money because it is older. Very, I mean, definitely antique, over 100 years old. Here, we even see right here, Marta Torin, or actually, Marta Mini of Farmer, 5'5". 1949. You can see her emblem on there, M for Marta. It says here 1917. So this is Marta's little box here. But here is the most prized possession of all. Remember in that video I told you pay attention to this box or this ring? This right here is Marta Torres' actual signet ring. It does have her initials on it, MT, for Marta Torin. It is gold. I don't know what percentage of gold it is. But uh, very, very tiny fingers. Look at this. It won't even fit on my uh, little finger here. Very, uh, very dainty woman. Very small woman. But this right here is what I call one of the greatest treasures. So it's her signet ring, which... I'm going to put up for auction uh, at, uh, I haven't decided which auction company I'm going to put that up for, um, because that is an actual ring that Marta did wear. But uh, <clears throat> that concludes Marta's treasure. But let's go on to more about the family. What about the dad? Have you ever seen the movie The Preacher's Wife with Whitney Houston? Well, that was a remake of another one called The Bishop's Wife. Bishop's Wife, written by Robert Nathan, here. 
was a, a story about an angel who comes down to help a, a preacher and his wife. And the preacher's kind of preacher's wife kind of falls for the angel, and of course that can't happen. But in the end, everything works out. But uh, he wrote the script for that. I believe that's what put him on the radar. This right here is the actual book that that Bernard used to make notes for the script. The the actual script. I don't have the actual script at all. Uh, but yeah, this was his book. You could tell he had different marks in there uh, things that he thought were important when he was actually writing the script he read the book probably several times to get a gist of it and then he wrote the screenplay for it now he did write a book years later called the Seder and the saint and we'll be getting to that shortly but before we go into that let's look at some of the personal book collections of bernard Leonardo Bravanci. I may be saying that right. I probably butchered his last name. I'm sorry. But here we have Leonardo Bravo Bercovici. But Nardo for short. Again, this is from his private library. He wasn't a movie star, but he married a movie star and he did a lot of uh, uh, things for Hollywood, a lot of screenwriting for Hollywood here. Again, you can see all oh, these here. These books are original from him. And it just validates that uh, uh, Martha's, Marta's stuff is, is authentic because we have Leonardo's stuff right next to it. Okay. Here we have the one-act plays to Leonardo from Gene Jackson, 1966. The Enjoyment of Poetry. Very interesting. Uncle Tom's Cabin. But kicked off the Silver War. And uh, here we have, he's got his signature in it. Here we have a book. What is it? Romance. <laughs> Translated. Marvelous Journey. Leonardo. See what we have here. Leonardo, a lot of notes in here. I'm not sure what this book is. Ultima Thule. Again, another Bernard book. The bar book. Now they had other books too, but I only kept the books that actually had their signature in it because that gives it more credence. Um, the other books I couldn't validate whose they were, even though they came from the same locker. book is The Journey of Simon McKeever and of course The Bishop's Wife and um, if you notice he did not actually write his name in it but he does have his notes in it so <clears throat> So Leonardo did write a book called The Satyr and the Saint about, of course, uh, an innocent young young actress and a, and a very bad man who was a movie producer. <laughs> you can see the different versions of it here. A novel of the Roman film colony. So I don't know if they ever made a movie about this or not. And here we have... Uh, like a printed copy of it that I guess their daughter took. So we have three copies here. Now, does it have his, have his signature in these books? No, that would have been amazing to have his signature in the book he wrote. But of course, you know, if you wrote the book, why would you have to sign it? You own the book, you wrote it. So I, he had actually a lot of what I thought was unpublished manuscripts. So when I saw this here and I flipped through it, it's called The Maestro. And I got excited because I thought this was the lost works of Leonardo Bercovici. But as I was researching it with my friend, he pointed something out. He says, do you know it? this right here is very similar to the Seder and the Saint? And I'm like, it was? And sure enough, I went through it. 
So the Seder and the Saint is actually the second draft, and this was the original first draft here, right? But this book was not published because it's extremely raunchy. Just the first few pages, we have sex. We have sex all the way through it, and at the very end, it ends with a sexual note. Very sexually written book. Not appropriate for that time. So I think maybe his publisher's like, you know, I think you need to tone it down a little bit. Thus, we have the sainter and the saint. I reached out to several the five big publishing companies and said, hey, I have the lost works of Leonardo here. Would you be interested? They all turned me down. They said, we don't take unsolicited works. You have to go through private channels and work your way up. Private channels meaning the local people. Well, I offered them something amazing. They're not taking it, so it's probably going to go up for auction. But this was the first rendition of this book here. And I'm hoping it'll make bank for me. I mean, just to have a lost work put out like that. And as far as I know, it hasn't been published yet. I could be wrong. I've looked all over. But Maestro is not published anywhere. But Seder and the Saint was. So these are all a complete set. Here is something else very interesting. It's got Leonardo's name on it. It is a it's blank, but it has a notebook that had his name engraved on it that was never used. Now, he got in trouble during the McCarthy trials. He was actually put up on, on the trial, and he did not answer. He pleaded the fifth, causing him to have to flee the country for five to ten years, which, you know, if he met uh, Marta Torin, or he probably met her, but married her overseas... But um, during that time, the question was, what was his involvement with communism? This book here answers the question. This book is called Human Nature and the Marxism View. Again, can't read it. It's another language. So why did he plead the fifth? Because from what I understand in my research is that Leonardo did look into communism, but he never converted over to it. And there's nothing wrong with looking. Even with me, I looked into other religions and still stayed true to mine. But he did look into it. And I think his interest in it, to understanding it, is what caused him to plead the fifth and have to flee the country. Because he didn't want to be caught in a lie or anything like that. And he pleaded the fifth to save himself because he probably knew people had other information about him but he says i am not communist but looks like this book verifies he did dive into it another secret revealed that i have uncovered here when i was going through the treasures of marta torin oh here we go this right here is the actual screen the script for magdalena that marta used to learn her lines when she made the movie. Historical significance here. This right here may be a lost script. Maybe it was made, I don't know. This is a script, an original script here called Speak of the Devil by Leonardo and somebody by the name of Edmund H. North. And if you recall from your movie history, all you movie buffs out there, North made a movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still. So what we have here is a collaboration between Leonardo and North to make this... I thought it was a movie script, but it's not. It could have been turned into a movie script, but this short story called... Speak of the Devil. Have I read through it yet? No, I have not. <laughs> but it's an original here, and I don't know. Hopefully that's worth a lot of money. We'll find out. If you know anything about it, leave a note in the comments. Let me know. Reach out to me on auctionexpeditions.com. Hit the email. Send me an email if you know more about it. With that being said, these could all be potential lost, unpublished scripts by Leonardo. 
I have been looking for these. I haven't seen anything. But here we have Grace Under Pressure, a play by Leonardo, 1989. We have another script here called The Berserk, based on a true story. No date given here. See, it is a script here. And maybe for the first time ever I could be reading this. You can be a best doctor anywhere. I don't care about being rich. He looks at her. But I care about you. She reaches over and squeezes his hand softly. Marie. Here we have another script here. A brother to jackals. Again, no date on here. The place is in Rome, in a bar, in a lounge. Another script here. A middle of a dark room, 1988. So he kept writing all the way up until his death. Uh, 1949, The Mayorling. I don't know, it sounds like a movie was made out of this one. This right here, you can tell by the paper, this is definitely an original here. And finally, Bernardo did pass away several years ago. And here we have his obituary in the paper, died at age 87 in his actual glasses. So his daughter kept that on the mantle here. I remember when we first were going through the boxes, this was in a box that she kept next to her, what we thought were human remains, but turned out to be cat remains. But she did keep all these things together because she loved her dad greatly. Even though he had other children, he loved his daughter and his daughter loved him very close. And in fact, uh, in some of her letters to her dad, she's like, Dad, don't be afraid about dying. Tell me about it. I'm your daughter. I'm a psychologist. I want to talk about death with you. You're not, you don't say anything about death. Doesn't it scare you? Talk to me. I love you. I'm your daughter. I don't know if they ever had that conversation, but I know her daughter pleaded out to him before his passing. And last but not least, we will look at a few items from their daughter herself. Christine. Christina. Very interesting thing here. Christina got her degree after she did a stint in the TV world. After being a, a, a mild, um, after being a minor TV star, she did write this, uh, uh, looks like a dissertation. Christina did her uh, dissertation, a proposal to investigate the relationship between orgasmic dysfunctions in women and the occurrence and frequency of psychosomatic disorder. So, uh, yeah, she did her research to get her degree after her stint in the TV world scene. And while she was there, she loved Anne Rice. I found so many Anne Rice books of her. Well, she reached out to a colleague of her who helped her out and said, look, here is a copy of Anne Rice's possibly first book, Catherine and Jean, 1971. It says right here, Christina, one of a few, for a few and a few, Merry Christmas, love, Maureen. Here she made a copy. It says, a creative work submitted to the faculty at the San Francisco State College in partial fulfillment of the requirements for a master's degree. So this was Anne Rice's uh, dissertation or uh, uh, paper for uh, graduation. And this may be her first novel ever. Uh, I mean, other than the short story she wrote before that. I don't know if this is even out there in the world yet, but this is an Anne Rice original. That being said, we're closing in on the last few items here. Here's a stack of private letters for the historian about the family. And like her dad, she too was a writer, but she journaled her life. If anybody ever did the history of her family, all of, the, all of the private diary stuff about her thoughts and how she felt about her mom and dad, which I don't even know, are actually kept in all of these journals here, dream journals. 81 to 85, um, personal journals here. She uh, kept a lot of uh, very, very interesting things here. Um, anyway, these are all her private journals, which I am not going to share private to the world. 
unless someone wants to do a historical background on her and her family and we have pages and pages of understanding from her point of view her side of the story and thus concludes the treasures the lost treasures of Marta Torin and her family Christina and Leonardo this is what the daughter had and the daughter vanished off the face of the earth and here I am to preserve their family's history in the world of cinema even though it's outside of our time they are still part of our history in some way or another because we watch them on the silver screen so here I am protecting it ready to send it out to, to private collectors or people historians who want to write about these lost people because history is still being written lost history is still being discovered and I have discovered a lot of lost history just by buying a storage locker from a woman who gave it up so long ago Thank you.